was woken up by a knock at my door in the middle of the night. The knock was soft at first, but it got louder, which startled me. I got up and turned on the lights and put on my robe. I slowly started walking towards the door, thinking who it would be at such an hour. As I approached nearer, I heard, Miss Sydney Davis, it's the police. Open up. I suddenly stopped moving. It was not the first time the police had knocked at my door at night. It was the third. I got anxious and hoped and prayed they didn't have any bad news. Miss Davis, the policeman called out again. So I wiped the fearful look off my face and opened the door to two policemen. I was absolutely devastated by what they said next. But before we move on, like this video, hit that subscribe button, and activate the notification bell. You will become rich in the future. Trust me, it works. You better come down to the station with us, one of them had said. Is there any problem, officer? It's quite late, I replied. Ryan Miller was found lifeless in his apartment, and you were the last person to be seen with him. Everything else will be discussed with you at the station, he replied. My heart sank. Not again, I thought, and for a while I even felt cursed. But since the policemen were waiting, I didn't even get enough time to feel or mourn. I excused myself to go get dressed more appropriately. So I quickly got dressed and grabbed my purse and locked my apartment. We got into the police car and headed towards the station. In the car, I was getting more and more nervous. I didn't want to say anything, but I couldn't remain silent anymore. Am I in trouble? I asked. It depends on if you were responsible or not. This is not an arrest. We just need to question you as soon as possible. One of the police officers replied. After hearing that, I was a little relieved. I know it was selfish of me as my boyfriend was just found dead, but that was not the first time. It was the third guy that I dated who died as if I was cursed or something. And each time I grew colder and colder. We arrived at the station and they led me directly to the questioning room. I waited there for a few minutes after which the lead detective arrived. Do you want anything to drink? He asked. He had questioned me in the previous two cases as well. I'm fine, thank you, I replied. Well, Sydney, you know the drill. Do you want the presence of your lawyer? He asked again. No, I'm ready, I said. Tell me about your evening, every detail, he said. We went to dinner like usual at Basil's, took a little walk, and then he dropped me to my apartment around 8.30. He walked me to my apartment door and left. That was the last time I saw him, I told him innocently. He asked me a couple of different questions like if I had ever asked money from him, what kind of job Ryan did, if I had ever been to his apartment, which did not make sense to me. They must have assumed I was responsible because I wanted their money or something. After about an hour and a half, the questioning was over. I would like to take a polygraph test or a lie detector test tomorrow if you are okay with it, he said as I was about to leave. I had nothing to hide, so I instantly replied, sure. Then a policeman drove me home. It was almost three in the morning, and I was tired like anything, so I went straight to bed. The next day in the afternoon, I went to the station for the polygraph test. I was prepared for it, but I was a little nervous as I had never gone through something like that before. What if I mess up and I get arrested for that? I thought. For a second, I regretted not calling my lawyer for her presence. The detective sat me on a chair and a polygraph expert wrapped around some wire around my arms, chest, and stomach. The wires were linked to a device that was connected to a computer. After the expert was done preparing me for the test, the detective came on to explain the procedure to me. I'll ask you a bunch of questions. You have to answer in a yes or no. The data, if you lied or not, will be collected on the computer, okay? He said. All right, I replied. Then he started with simple questions at first like, Is your name Sidney Davis? Yes, I replied. He looked at the expert and the expert nodded in agreement that I had told the truth. He asked me several such questions about me, my work, day-to-day, -day, and relationships. He kept on looking back and forth from me to the expert in the process. In the end, he asked me, did you meet Ryan on the night of his death? Yes, I replied. Did you follow him back to his apartment after he dropped you? He asked again. No, I said, and the detective looked at the expert again. He nodded that I told the truth. So the detective gave a sigh and said, all right, Sydney, you can go and wait outside. I'll get back to you in a while. So I went and waited on a bench outside the room. After about 10 minutes, he came out and said, you're good, you passed the lie detector test, and you're off of our suspect list. We might call if we need you again. A list? <laughs> I doubt they had a list. I could see by the disappointment in the detective's face, because I passed the test, that I was their one and only suspect. 
If they had only worked to find other suspects beyond me, they might have been able to catch the responsible one already. I wanted to tell them to do their jobs properly, but I didn't. I just thanked them and left. A couple of months passed, but there was no new development in the case. Without any suspect to follow, the case grew cold and I grew colder. I started distancing myself from people and shut myself in my apartment and only went out to get essentials. I even left my job and started working online from home. There were so many guys on my social media who would ask me out for a coffee, but I would always reject them because I didn't want another life lost. I had too much and lost too much because of this stupid curse, maybe. However, I did meet someone amazing. One day I was on my grocery run, and that was usually the only time I used to get out of my apartment. So, I was in the store looking at some cereal, and I wasn't paying much attention to the surroundings. Suddenly, a guy bumped into me from behind. We both turned around. I am so sorry. I didn't intend to- Are you hurt? He said very fast in a concerned tone. He was so handsome, soft-spoken, and polite. I just melted. No, no, I'm okay. Thank you. I replied. Here, let me carry your stuff for you is my way of apologizing. I'm Henry, he said. I couldn't say no. He was very nice, so I introduced myself and let him drive my cart around as I shopped. I was done with the groceries, so we went to the counter, paid up, and got out. He even helped me carry all the stuff to my car. It was time to say goodbye. Thank you for being so nice, I said. No, I had to. Hey, so do you want to get a coffee sometime? He asked. So sleek, I thought, but the horror of my past instantly took over me. I'm so sorry, but I can't do that right now, I replied. Well, maybe at least exchange our numbers for when you are ready, he asked again. I didn't want to be rude when he had been so sweet to me, so I agreed and we exchanged numbers and went our separate ways. He started sending me good morning and good night texts, which I thought were so sweet. However, I chose to ignore them a few times to see if he would stop. I didn't want to develop feelings for him because I knew where that would lead, eventually. But he didn't stop and he kept on texting, so I started replying. After two months of texting, I finally decided that I would meet him. We made a plan to go to the amusement park during the weekend. The day of our date finally arrived. I was so excited and anxious at the same time. I took a lot of time to get ready, changing from dress to dress because I wanted to look good since it had been so long since I had been out to have fun. Henry came to pick me up and we drove to the amusement park. It was so much fun and lively there with so many rides and games. I had always been scared of the rides, so we skipped those completely and went to the carnival games. We played balloon darts and even won a stuffed toy. We walked around for a while and headed home. I haven't had such a nice day in so long. After that, we met frequently. He usually came to my apartment with Chinese takeout, which was my favorite, and we would just sit on the couch watching movies, eating and talking. In his presence, I felt normal again. And slowly, I started forgetting about past events because Henry was such a perfect person. One day, however, he had left pretty late from my apartment, so I was waiting for his I'm home or goodnight text, but it never came. The horror instantly took over me like a black cloud, but I hoped and prayed for good and waited for the message and fell asleep after a while eventually. In the morning, instantly as I woke up, I got a call from the detective. Come down to the station as quickly as possible he said and hung up. Hearing what he said made me dizzy. I felt my heart beating in my head. Tears started running down my cheek and I couldn't stop. I kept on crying even as I dressed up to go down to the station. I had just found him and now I will have to deal with his death, I thought. I arrived at the station and rushed in as fast as I could, but what I saw inside just froze my feet. There in the corner near the questioning room was Henry, talking to the detective and he was in a police uniform. I didn't think much and went right to hug him. He hugged me back and said, I'm fine. I'm sorry I had to hide from you about being police. Honestly, I didn't even care. I was so relieved that he was alive and well in front of me. I do have news for you. We caught the person responsible for the deaths of those three people. I couldn't utter a single word, but I felt light as if a weight I didn't even realize I was carrying was lifted off my shoulders. Then he sat me on the bench and explained to me what happened. He was hired to figure out what actually happened to the people who dated me as an undercover agent. Last night when I left your apartment, I felt like someone was following me. 
so I got in the car and instantly informed the team to have a backup ready for when I reached my place, he said. He continued to tell me that when he reached and was about to enter his apartment, a man grabbed him from behind, but thanks to the backup, he couldn't harm him. He had a syringe full of poison in his hand that could have taken Henry's life instantly, and the shocking part was that the man lived just a floor below me. To add to the shock, Henry told me that when they raided that guy's place, they found thousands of photos of me and the guys I had dated before, and even Henry's. My face went pale hearing everything, but Henry tried to comfort me. Don't worry, he's going to jail for life and I will always protect you, he said and hugged me, and I felt safe. Thanks for watching. So what do you think? Could I have done anything to save my boyfriends? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe and check out the other videos on the channel.